All right, what we're looking at here is the uh, Innovonix 525 AM modulation monitor. Probably not the typical device that a Part 15 station would buy because it is a piece of uh, broadcast equipment generally used at a commercial radio station at a commercial transmitter and is priced accordingly. But uh, I, I managed to get a really good deal, just stumbled into one that was B-Stock, which means it was... Uh, a demonstrator or had perhaps been uh, you know sent out for a demo or whatever but um, it did come with the full three-year factory warranty and I can't distinguish it from a brand new unit from the way it was packed and uh, all the paperwork and everything and um, I managed to get uh, well pretty close to a thousand dollars off the uh, regular price so very easy unit to set up though whether you're using it for a part 15 station or for a regular broadcast station whatever the case might be uh, basically for part 15 you connect two things this will uh, give you modulation readings directly off the air there's no need to hardwire anything uh, so you can simply connect an antenna here um, if you're using it with a uh, commercial transmitter, it generally has a uh, output to drive a modulation monitor, a high-level output. That can be connected here with a BNC connector, and then you just flip this switch for which uh, source your uh, signal is coming from. It has an audio output that uh, is very high quality audio for monitoring this is considered to be a reference receiver so you really can listen to what your station sounds like and then it also has connections for alarms and you can set the parameters we'll look at that in just a minute um, but these uh, certain uh, events will close these relays and can set off any type of alarm you want uh, for either over modulation if it loses the carrier or if it loses audio you can set up three different alarms, and uh, that pretty much is everything on the back end. All you really need for a Part 15 station is an antenna and, um, and power, and you're, and you're pretty much ready to go. So we'll turn this around now, we'll take a look at the other side, and we'll go through the, uh, the settings, which are really a piece of cake. Okay, as we sit right here, the uh, unit is uh, monitoring my Part 15 station off of an antenna. You can see it's giving us the peak modulation reading and we're tuned into 1620 which is the frequency I use. I hope you can see the screen in this video. I don't know if this camera is going to be able to reproduce this or not but I guess we'll find out. Set up though, you connect your antenna, you uh, connect your power and you're pretty much ready to rock. Uh, the unit does come with a large loop antenna that can be mounted outside and connected with cable television coax if you need it. Um, here I'm receiving off the air. The uh, transmitter is approximately, well, it's one floor up and uh, maybe 20 feet, 25 feet away from me, the transmitting antenna. So for an antenna here, all I needed was a piece of wire about, um, I don't know, maybe 18 inches long, which is uh, just connected to the center of the uh, antenna input jack. But you power it up and you go through the uh, setups. Um, uh, the first thing you want to do is set your frequency, obviously, and see I'm at 1620, but you can go through it uh, to whatever frequency you need. And you continue on through, and you look for the signal rate ratio the best you can get is s9 at 40 db and you can see i'm just about to trip into overload you see the word overload come up every so often because i have as much signal there it is i'm holding the antenna to get the overload signal uh you're not you're not getting uh you may not have accurate modulation readings if you're in overload or if your signal's too weak so i uh I try to position my 18 inches of antenna wire to get solid 40 dBs at S9, and then it searches for a synchronous noise, um, which can be up to about 4, and you're still going to be okay for accurate uh, modulation reading. See, now I've messed up my antenna moving this around to make this video, but normally I leave it positioned where it's solid at S9 and 40 dBs over which is uh, the, the best you can get for the most accurate modulation reading. And uh, so you set that up uh, by, by getting your antenna positioned. Then, you, then this only affects the uh, audio output. You can uh, set up the audio cut if you want to uh, cut it off at, at varying uh, uh, audio levels. You have your choice of uh, NRSC de-emphasis in or out. I'm out because my uh, Procaster is not uh, providing us with NRSC standard. Uh, we continue through the uh, setups here. Um, now we have over here some buttons or some lights. I hope you can see these in the video. The uh, 
the ones that uh, come preset in the machine are 100% negative modulation flash and 125% uh, positive modulation flash and then the two yellow lights are user selectable so if we go back to this uh, you see I have a positive peak flash at 100%. So anytime this yellow light is on, I'm hitting at least 100% modulation, which is what I want to be doing. And uh, I want to occasionally hit 125 on the peak. And you can, uh, you can change that setting to whatever uh, you would like it to be. Uh, same with the negative. Uh, the red one flashes at 100% uh, negative modulation, but you can set it to flash at... Uh, at you know 80% if you wanted to then the uh, the relay connections I showed you on the back you can set for carrier loss audio loss uh, if any of those things happen, uh, it will close those relays on the back and set off any type of external alarm that you might uh, decide to hook up. I have no use for those, so I never hook them up. But uh, see, uh, if the audio was off for over five seconds, it would close that relay, but I don't have it hooked up to anything, so it just doesn't matter. And then it uh, automatically goes back to the... Uh, the regular peak modulation screen if you just leave it alone for a few seconds. Another nice feature that it has, and part of how I, uh, I get to cleverly use this as a tax write-off, if you can see over here, it has uh, tuning presets, and you can uh, set it up for other stations. I have 1620 in there right now. The uh, commercial station that I work for is at 1320, and the transmitter is about 8 miles away, and you'll see that I can just punch that up, give it a couple of seconds to stabilize, and we're now monitoring the modulation of the commercial station that I work for, where our new horribly expensive uh, Orban processor is set to peak us at about 100% positive and negative modulation because the Orban people will explain to you that asymmetrical modulation is not necessary and blah, 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 and anything beyond that, and it starts sounding kind of distorted. So here we're looking at the, uh, the commercial radio station that I work for. If I want to check our competitor station or another station that's uh, the other direction from me, I have them on preset 3, and uh, you can see that they're rather conservative in their modulation. They're peaking uh, maybe 90% on a good day. They're a talk format radio station, but you'll see now I'm getting the low signal warning because they're about 20, uh, 20 25 miles away from me. And with my little 18-inch antenna, I don't quite get enough signal for a reliable modulation signal. So they may be doing a little bit better than that. But, uh, but nonetheless, you can just punch from any presets that are within your listening area. We'll punch it back here to uh, 1620, give it a second to uh, calibrate itself and lock in. And there's, uh, there's how my station is doing right now. Uh, well, I'll turn on the radio over here so you can hear it. And... Uh, you can see that I generally peak well over 120% positive, and uh, it, it seems that the Procaster has a pretty solid um, drop-off. It will not uh, modulate over 100% negative modulation, which of course you don't want it to, or you start getting a distortion and carrier uh, dropout. So that's to me is the perfect scenario I'm peaking at 125 positive and it's got a pretty hard peak of uh, hundred percent of the negative side just just the way it is and I assume that that's the way the Procaster is designed there's nothing in the uh, in the instructions about that there's nothing in the documentation that says it's got a hard limit at hundred percent but that's what uh, what this has proven to be so so that is the Univonics uh, model 525 modulation monitor this is the new model it replaced the 520 and again this is not a uh, this is not a uh, inexpensive uh, I think I'll just get one of those because it'd be fun to have in my station kind of devices it's a it's a serious piece of broadcast equipment their regular list price is right around twenty five hundred dollars uh, I think some of the catalogs have it at about twenty one and again I happen to pick up a model on B stock just by a fluke that it happened to be there the day I looked and I called my uh, sales girl at the uh, supplier and manage to grab it before somebody beat me to it. And I can use it, you know, in my in my work monitoring other radio stations too. So it's uh, it's more than a, a use for just here. Um, let me show you this antenna here. Hang on a second. Let's. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna inconveniently move the antenna. Okay, this is one of those moments where I have no idea if my head is even in the picture. But this is the uh, loop antenna that comes with the radio, I'm, or with the uh, modulation monitor. I'm kind of standing with the black shirt. You probably can't see it, but it's a it's a loop antenna. It's got the uh, coax connector here, regular Type F connector, and it's uh, it's clearly PVC pipe that's been painted. But this is very stout. There's no flex or give in it, and you can hear that there's a 
quite a few wire coils in there that are bound together inside this and it comes with a, a nice variety of mounting hardware clamps and brackets so if you wanted to clamp it to a mast or the side of a building all that is included with it but uh, as you can see from my part 15 being 20 25 feet away from the transmitter I have more than enough signal to run the monitor and also more than enough signal to monitor the uh, commercial station I work for from this location so I have no need to put this up but uh, it's available if I needed it, if I wanted to go poking around other radio stations, you really grab some signal with this uh, loop antenna. So that, that pretty much covers the Innovonix 525, a fun, easy-to-use device that uh, will probably last, if it's anything like the Bilar units we have out at the transmitter at the uh, commercial station I work for. Those have been out there for at least 30 years, so I would anticipate a, a new device like this to last at least that long, which is plenty long for me.